wanna talk to you. I wanna talk to you. Just wait.
out in perfect harmony, Terry Ellis becomes the first of the divas to offer the world her singular sound. And she does just that on Southern Gas. Brother Angel Snub Nub Seven at the Reality Temple, and to give props to him because I listen to all of Angel Snub Nub Seven's videos. I think that um, he comes from a different angle, and there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out. And I try to catch all of them. I, I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with, or which he may think differently from. And I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB KBS, and he has also challenged the Black Supremacy Movement as well. And I have nothing against that because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand, cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. Not to be popular, it's just I'm inspired by my brother, that reality tip was brother, the most powerful voice on the internet, that reality, angel snubbing up seven, that's right brother, I'm calling you out brother, I'm calling, I'm building you, I'm putting you out there brother, I'm shouting you out, that's, that's, what, that's my inspiration. This is an honor, <laughs> I've been watching you for at least a couple years now, Yes, sir. from the first time I got hip to your channel, I've been hooked ever since. I'm I'm always I'm always looking out for new videos. I mean, when I first saw your channel, I said, "Oh, this is an ancestor that has most definitely returned. Yes, most sir. definitely. This is not a new ancestor. This is an old ancestor. <laughs> you could you could you could hear, you could feel the ancestors through you." You know, most people probably say, "What is he talking about?" Right. They don't get it. You gotta, you you gotta be on that on that level. I trust that feeling. Does anybody have any questions of me before I get out of here? Let's see what you guys are saying. What's up, Soul Sister Rona? Hey, Talik. I'm the brother that did my uh, Mike Jackson in Tunica, Mississippi. Hey, now. Uh, hello to Terry. Respect. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. Well, when you have laws and things on paper that say, if you do this, we're going to punish you by incarcerating you and you break them and you're dumb enough to get caught, then you're just dumb. All right, all right. Shout out to Reality's Temple in the building. Well, just for my, I got to get him on here, man. You talk about somebody polarizing. Whoa. <laughs> that brother, that brother is, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Shout out to the brother, though, Just.
and that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to he's doing good work, and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. My yeah, um, you know, today, you know, I was um, looking at another video that you had done um, a few days ago about this psychopath. Um, and um, I was, I was feeling sad, you know, just looking at the video, I felt sad. I, I, a sense of sadness came over me. And, um, I just felt like society let this monster walk free. Society allowed this monster to walk, to roam free. And this monster has hurt and destroyed many lives probably since his teenage years. He's been he's been lying. He's been a psychological 
I'm sorry, he's been a pathological liar since his teenage years. He's been a pathological liar mm -hmm. since his teenage years. And he's done a lot of things since his teenage years. Okay. But this man was able to navigate through life. He was able to have his dreams come true. He was able to live out his life. He was able to weasel his way into a lot of women's lives and trick a lot of women and females. And he's been living his life carefree and, you know, everything's been going good for him. And I'm, I'm sitting back looking at this shit like, okay. And that, that is why a lot of times I look at people today, I, I look at people and, and I just, I don't trust, you know, I don't trust them. I don't, I don't trust people. Brother Talia. I just wanted to get your attention. That's all. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get your attention, Brother Talia. So I saw you dozing off. I just wanted to get your attention. Okay. So, you know, I look at a lot of people and I just, I, I see, what I see when I look at people today is I see demons. Mm -hmm. That's what I see, I just see demons. I, I don't, I look at people and I just shake my head and I, and I, I just kind of, I don't trust you. I don't, I don't trust you as far as I can see you. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I know it's sad, you know, it's sad that I have to sit here. I'm, I'm 46 years old. I'll be 47 in August. And, I have to sit here and be distrustful of black men. It is it's not it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling to, to be walking around here distrustful of black males. And and this is no shade to you guys on the panel. I'm just telling you that this is I'm thinking this is a lot of women. <laughs> a lot of women are feeling the same way I'm feeling. I'm just being honest about it. I'm just telling you. That's all. I'm just telling you. But a lot of other women feel the same way I feel. <laughs> they don't trust you guys. They don't trust men. And don't take it personal. It's just, it's just the reality that we live in, that we live in today. Because I feel like at any moment, my life could be threatened. I feel like at any day, I could be murdered by a black male. Mm -hmm. And it's sad to say, but that is really how I feel. I got this man that keeps contacting me, reaching out to me, trying to talk to me, you know, and I'm going to put his name out there. Black son. Mm -hmm. Black son. Black son, I cut you off in 2013. I cut you off because you disrespected me, Black son. I cut you off because I don't trust you. I didn't trust you back in 2013, and I don't trust you today. And so that's why I don't want to talk to you on the phone. I don't want you back in my life. I don't want you back in my, back in, in my circle for you to drain my energy, Black son. You're not going to drain my energy. You're like, a, like an energy vampire. I know you're a sociopath, okay? And no matter how many times you try and reach out to me to make amends, uh, you talk about, you know, you're sorry and I was stupid, you know. Baby, I cut you off in 2013. This is 2021. I got a problem with you. I got a problem with you. Keep contacting me. Keep reaching out to me. Coming all in my live streams. I got a problem with you because I know that deep down inside, I know you really, I know you really think this is a game. This is a game for you. This, this is what this is. It's a game for you, Black Sun. The hunt is on. Because that is what you are. You're a predator. 
You're a predator of women. And I can see that about you, Black son. Nobody is fooling me. Nobody, I don't, I don't care what you, I don't care what you come as. I don't care if you can come as the angel of light. You can come in as an angel of light. And I can see right through you. <laughs> I, can, I can see exactly who you are. And so, you know, this man, Anthony Milan Ross has murdered three people and there's no telling how many other people he has murdered. We'll never know about it because he'll never tell it. Mm -hmm. This guy is obviously a psychopath. He's a, he's a psychopath. He's a serial killer, obviously. But society has allowed this guy to roam free all this time and harm and destroy lives because we live in a sociopathic society itself. And sociopathic people tend to cover for other sociopathic people. Mm -hmm. And there are people that railroaded you in the, in the state of Missouri, they railroaded you because they were sociopaths themselves. This guy was clearly the stalker and he was able to lie to the authorities in Missouri and turn that shit around on you. Mm -hmm. Made you look like the stalker. And so he had you locked up for almost 10 years for something that he was clearly himself, which was a predator, a predator, mm -hmm. a stalker, a murderer, a robber, and a thief. That was that was all he he was himself. But he somehow made the authorities believe that that was you. That was you. But it was him. It was him the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he lied his way through life. That's what he did. He lied his way through life. You know, clearly a deceiver. Clearly a deceiver. He deceived a lot of people, including his 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 self. He's, he deceived himself. And you know, it, it just, you know, it, it brought back a lot of negative memories about a lot of things that, you know, people had accused me of. And and see, yeah, you was accused of being a stalker, which resulted in you being locked away almost 10 years, but I was a I was accused of being a poor employee. I was accused, you know, and I, and I got terminated because I was falsely accused of being a poor employee mm -hmm. at a law firm. And they falsely accused me of, you know, uh, not being a team player. You understand what I'm saying? But see, really, the, the women in the office, the women in the office, were not only discriminatory toward me, I'm talking about at the law firm that I that I was uh, a paralegal at. Not only were they discriminatory toward me, but they 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 were backstabbers. They were they were liars, clearly. And they made me look like I was, I was uh, not a team player. They made me look like I was a poor worker or, you know, they made me look like I wasn't working hard enough or I wasn't good enough for the law firm. That's how they made me look to the office manager who was friends with the lead paralegal over me. The office manager was friends with the lead paralegal over me. And because the lead paralegal didn't like me and she had a problem with me, therefore the office manager also had a problem with me. And together they both conspired to get rid of me. And <laughs> they both conspired to get me up out of there. And, you know, a lot of people, they thought, yeah, you know, I got myself terminated. They, they thought I got myself terminated from that job. They, they felt like it was somehow my fault. 
you know, they felt like, oh, you know, you must have did something to uh, get yourself terminated from the law firm. Or you must have did something to get yourself terminated from MARTA, you know. It was all my fault. When everything was happening, it was all Alberta fault. She got herself terminated. And that's how that's how things went down, you know, with Talik being falsely accused of, um, you know, being a stalker by this Anthony Milan Ross. And so let the troll um, talk and do whatever the hell he here to do. Let him talk because clearly he is here to harass and bully us on this platform. So let him talk because I know why he's here. He's here because of Nepal Shaddaa. Nepal Shaddaa. He's mad because of the videos that I've been making on Nepal Shaddaa. So that's why Real Deal to You is here harassing me and bullying us on this platform because he's mad about the videos I've been doing about Nepal Shaddaa inside Netta. <laughs> um, but I tell you one thing, if anything happens to me, then uh, people are going to point the authorities in your direction, you and Sarnetta's and Napasha Da's directions, if anything was to happen to me here in Atlanta, okay? So with that being said, uh, I felt a little bit sad, you know, down and out today, you know, and, and, and really it's just, it's just making me feel even more sad talking about it, really. Mm -hmm. It's making me feel even more sad talking about it to right now because it's reminding me of things that I went through, even though I didn't get locked away for almost 10 years, but I lost good jobs. You know, I, I was falsely accused and wrongly terminated, you know, based on lies, based on, you know, people lying on me and, and saying, you know, things that aren't true, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know. I mean, you know, but it's 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 all good. I mean, uh, people are going to continue to harass and bully, and and they're going to continue even even now. They're going to continue to keep keep you know blaming you for what happened. They're going to continue to say you put yourself in that situation. They're going to continue to say that. Uh, I I I should know because you know even though I took Marta to court. And um, I won my unemployment case against Marta back in 2015. Uh, people still, they still blame me, you know, for being terminated from Marta. They still blame me for that, you know? So, you know, and, and you know, at the time I was really depressed about, about losing my job at Marta, okay? But um, I'm not depressed now about it, but I'm just saying, but, you know, um, it's just, you know, sad. It's just sad, that's all, that this man took three lives. He took three lives. And, and you know, the state of Missouri is partially to blame. Yeah. I, I would say the state of Missouri is partially to blame for that. But, I mean, if I was the family, I would, I would probably file a lawsuit against the state of Missouri, um, if they can. Uh, if they can, because I believe this guy probably got a record even before he did what he did to you. I think he probably has a record, you know, he has a record before he did what he did to you. So, you know, with that being said, um, Everybody who is black. 
and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for, a change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Edmondrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. saying I really know him except for what he told me and what I seen. But I know he crazy because I read them papers and then I called St. Louis. So I know it's the truth. I called St. Louis, talked to Dr. Raymond. And he told me, you know, I can't really give you any information. But if you ask the right questions, I'll say yes or no. And I asked him, do you think he is here? He said, no. Mm. No. He, got, he got his karate outfit on. And he, told me, <laughs> he told me, if you want whatever you can do, if you get your case and your ducks in a row, you can look, do a case against him. Well, when I tried, I could not find him. Particular person in the hospital, please press zero. Wait while I transfer your call. For Women's Treatment Center, South, may I help you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a, a couple of general, general questions maybe you can help me with. I'm trying to do a, a paper on mental health. If you could help me with just some general questions, I really appreciate it. I'll try. Okay, thank you. Now, the first question is, now I, I know this, but I want to just get clarification. Um, now, nobody, a stranger off the street, cannot call your facility and ask information on any of your clients. That's correct? That is correct. All, the, all your clients are protected under HIPAA. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I figure so, ma'am. Also, now, if, if I was a former client, how would I go about getting information about myself? I can connect you with medical records. Okay, so I would have to contact medical records. Yes, sir. Also, after a person that you know of is deceased, even under HIPAA, are those, those are still records that you keep under wraps, right? Yes, sir. Also, my last question, you're doing beautiful for me. Thank you so much. Okay, I want to know, is any information of any of your clients, is any of that information under HIPAA, is that, made, is that public information? No, it's not. Under no circumstance is any of the information coming from your facility made public. That is correct. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. I'm going to stay out that situation because it has nothing to do with me. Nandi J going to speak about her experience. But I'm going to stay out that situation because it has nothing to do with me. Nandi J going to speak about her experience. But I'm going to stay out that situation because it has nothing to do with me. Nandi J going to speak about her experience. But I'm going to stay out that situation because it has nothing to do with me. Nandi J going to speak about her experience. But I'm going to stay out that situation because it has nothing to do with me. 90J gonna speak about her experience.
Then Broad told a bunch of lies on just about everybody. And see, I had to go get me some damn coffee and calm myself down because I just can't understand all of these explanations and this, this passiveness and stuff with this Broad. I mean, I just don't get it. When you're the type of person that's been on everybody's panel, you're not teaching anything constructive. All of the stuff that you say you believe in, you have allowed this man to turn you against what you consider to be the Torah. Oh, no, the no, 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 no. I didn't allow, not, I did not allow not, anybody to do anything. No, uh, it's, it's no, I'm talking about, I did not allow. I'm talking about her potion. No, no. I'm not talking about you. I just stated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't sorry. have. I don't have any beef with you, sister. We've never had any conflict. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Work. I've read your books and I support your channel. I, I understand. misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I understand that. You know, I, I understand. misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I, I understand. misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I, I understand. misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I, I understand. misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I, I, I understand. misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I won't be following nobody but God. Look at look in, look into my eyes, okay? And God's representative, which is a black woman. 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 And more specifically, my pastor.
te llamo para que vayas a recoger las paelleras. Y me acuesto al sur, para, ya para abrir el restaurante que era el arroz. Y me llama el cocinero. Risita, ¿qué? Ve por la paellera. Venga, que las dos de la tarde ya están aquí. Miren, bañador. En las chanclas. Todo despeinado porque no me dio tiempo de nada ponerme las chanclas. Y el bañador. Voy a la playa, había subido la marea. Eso. Eso. Había subido la marea y conté una paella. Eso. Y la encontré porque te estaba, porque estaba la paella en agarrar. Entre metí entre las piedras de Chipiona, de Faro. Y cuando entro en el restaurante, me ve el cocinero con una paellera y a la vez te paella. ¡A no vale! ¡A no vale! ¡Mira dónde llega el agua! ¡Llegaba el agua hasta el restaurante! ¡No había subido la marea! Somebody called me and knocked my volume down, so I'm going to go out of the chat room and come back in, okay? You sound all right. Oh, she, she can't hear us, though, because when you're on your telephone and somebody calls you, it knocks the volume down. We can hear her, but she can't hear, hear us. Yeah, she should, okay, where, where you at? Okay, there she go. All right. Yeah, I couldn't hardly hear you. I know y'all can hear me, but I couldn't yeah. hardly hear you. All right, See right. What I'm so, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. I would want revenge. I would want revenge. I'm not with all this forgiveness and all this, you know, uh, but fuck all that. I, I would want revenge, especially after he's, you know, been, he's been, you know, he's been out here all these years. He's done a lot of dirt to a lot of people. He had physically abused his family in Missouri. He killed his, his ex-wife who didn't want to be with him no more and mm -hmm. then killed their two children. I would want revenge for what that Negro did to me. I would, I would make sure I would send videos to these television networks and yeah, Missouri I, uh, and, and Phoenix and wherever the hell he is. I, <laughs> I'm telling you, I would want revenge. I fuck all that, all, all that forgiveness and kumbaya bullshit. I fuck all that. To hell with all that. I would want to make sure that he knows that he remembers me. If he don't remember shit else, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure he remembers me, remembers my face, your, you know, you, I'm talking about you, but I'm just saying, you know, I would make sure I would, I would send videos. I know you, you say you're going to send videos, you know, Yeah. I would, honey, I would send videos in every direction. I would, ooh, <laughs> I would, I would try and tear his ass down in social media at least you know, at, at least in social media, you know, but that's, you know, that's, that's my on two cents. And, you know, I, I want to say, I want to say this, it, it amazes me how the trolls didn't show up tonight. Yeah. You know, where's all that energy that y'all had when y'all was accusing Angel Snuppin' Up 7? When y'all was saying he was crazy and y'all was saying, you know, he, um he put himself there and, you know, it's his fault. You know, just like people said it was my fault that I got myself terminated from Marta. They said it was my fault, too. They also blamed me. Oh, yeah, you know, you must have did something to get yourself terminated from that law firm. You, you did something. Otherwise, they would not have terminated you. You know, how people chatter, you know, yeah. black folks chattering, you know. So, you know, everything is our fault, you know. Absolutely. It ain't nobody else's fault. It ain't, ain't nobody else done shit to us. Oh, we we done it to ourselves. You know what right. I mean? You know. So I, I kind of I kind of got you know I got you know 
I got an issue with that. I, I got issues with people attacking your character all these years, and now they can't show up in this live stream. They can't uh, come huh. in this chat room, and they ain't got nothing to say. They quiet. They yeah. crickets. They crickets now. You know, they ain't got shit to say. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, but you know when you know when 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 you know when they didn't know about this Anthony Milan Ross guy. Yeah, you know everything is all your fault, Angel yeah. Seven of Seven. It's your fault. You did it to yourself. You know when when they didn't know about this Anthony yeah. Anthony Milan Ross. Even though I read the story several years ago, I read the story. I saw it. I just didn't know that was him mm -hmm. that she was talking about. I didn't know it was him. But I, I first saw the story several years ago. Okay, so I just didn't know it was him that you was talking about. But, you know, it, you know, okay, before y'all found out about Anthony Milan Ross, uh, you know, some of y'all was y'all was like, okay, you know, yeah, it's his fault. He is crazy. Yeah, I see why they put you in the mental facility. It's mm -hmm. your fault. You brought it on yourself. You crazy. Sister Noble crazy for talking to you. Sister Noble crazy for dealing with you. You know, remember all that. Yeah. <laughs> remember all that. Yeah, remember. Yeah, Sister Noble, she must be crazy like him to be over there fucking with him. You know, and that made me feel some type of way like, you know, okay. But see, now that I know, okay, well, well, it wasn't Angel Snuffin' Up 7. He didn't do that to himself. He didn't stalk this guy. He was railroaded by the state of Missouri. He was railroaded. And now nobody has anything to say. Nobody's in the chat room. None of your detractors, none of your critics, none of them showed up. Not Craig, not Alquan. No. Not Guy in Hollywood, not Ingrid. No. Not Diddy. Huh. Not Sarnetta. <laughs> not Napasha Da. Yeah, but we crazy though, according to Sarnetta and Napasha Da. Uh, yeah. Me and Angel Snuffin' Up Seven crazy. Mm hmm. That, that, what, that, what, that what Napas told me in a text. She said uh, Sarnetta was just being diplomatic. You know, he knows that you and Angel are crazy. That was mm -hmm. she wrote. She wrote me too. She wrote me in a text. That's mm -hmm. what she said in the text. I was like, he's just being diplomatic. He knows that you and Angel are crazy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what she said to me in a text message back in May. That was on May 2nd. And then I blocked her on my phone. I blocked her after that. But you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this and, you know, I hope I don't offend anybody. Sometimes it's best to be quiet if you really don't know the situation. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just best to be quiet if you don't know the whole situation. Right. Don't come out your mouth and say something, you know, and you really don't know the entire story or you don't know both sides to the story. Don't come out and just be so quick to accuse people of being crazy and um, having a mental illness because you know that they've been in a mental facility for almost 10 years. Okay, well, they shared that story with you. They shared their life with you. But he also told you that he wasn't guilty. He also told you that he did nothing. He also said that a guy lied on him and had him locked up. I do remember Angel Snuffin' Up 7 also explaining to you people that uh, this guy, I don't think he ever called him by his name in the live streams, but he said, this guy caused me to go to a mental facility lying on me, saying that I stalked him and that wasn't true. I do recall Angel Snuffin' Up 7 talking about that many, many times in video. Mm -hmm. But, you know, all of your detractors, all of your critics, all the people that didn't like you, they used that information to railroad you across social media. They used all of that information to railroad you across social media. And men to hotel, he's still sick. Yeah, see? 
That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And you don't know Angel snuffed up seven, but you know, we, we, we're not worrying about that. We're gonna focus on the serial killer that actually did kill somebody because Angel snuffed up seven never killed anyone. We're right. gonna focus on Anthony Milan Ross who actually did murder three people. He's a serial killer. He's a psychopath. That was the guy that falsely accused Angel Snuffed Up Seven of stalking him. That was the one who was stalking his estranged wife, Iris, before he murdered her and their two children. So we're not gonna worry about Mentu Hotel statement because it's irrelevant at this right. point. We know that Anthony Milan Ross is sitting in a in somewhere in a jail awaiting yep. trial for murder. And they say he, he might get the capital punishment. He might get the death penalty. That's that's what they say. But I don't know. I don't know. He might, you know, end up getting life in prison. He might go ahead and confess to all three murders and you know, they plea it down to life in prison. Instead of him getting capital punishment, he just get life in prison, <laughs> okay? Without the possibility of parole. So uh, we, don't, we don't care about what Mental Hotel is saying. His, his statement is irrelevant at this point because we now know that Angel Snup Nup 7 never stalked anyone. Mm -hmm. We now know that he was not the person that deserved to be behind bars in a mental facility. It was actually the other guy, Anthony Milan Ross, who deserved to be behind bars. <laughs> that was the real crazy person. <laughs> and, you know, I believe that Angel Snuffed Up 7 was set up. He was set up by officials in the state of Missouri. He was set up by uh, you know, the Department of Mental Health in Missouri, he was set up. And he can't get back all the years that he spent. You know, he can't get back those years. I can't get back all the years that I spent on these jobs, being harassed and bullied. I, I can't get back none of those years. I can't get back the wrongful terminations. I can't, I can't reverse none of that. I can't reverse none of that, okay? All the wrongful terminations, all the, uh, the workplace abuse, psychological abuse, psychological abuse, uh, discrimination that I endured in the law firm, in other jobs. And you know, I, I don't care if other people don't care about what I'm talking about right here. I don't care, I, you know, you can, you know, you can, you know, dismiss what I'm saying all you want. I, I have, I don't care if you do. I'm just telling you that this is the stuff that I went through on jobs in the past. I went through workplace harassment, workplace bullying, uh, psychological abuse, uh, discrimination in the workplace. I've been wrongfully terminated from MARTA. I was also wrongfully terminated from the law firm. And it doesn't matter if, you know, you know, people believe me or not. It doesn't matter if you want to hear what I got to say or not. I'm just telling you what I went through. I can't reverse none of all the years that I spent being bitter and angry behind what happened to me. I can't, I can't do anything about that. All I can do now is move forward. That's all I can do. But see, the damage is already done. The damage has already been done. And I want revenge. I want revenge for what has happened to me. I don't care about, you know, your God is going to do this and do that. Fuck your God. Fuck, you know, fuck all of that. I don't care about all that. Talking about your God is going to do this and they going to pay for that and this and that. God going to make sure they pay for this. I don't care about all that. I don't want to hear all that. I don't want to hear that. So what? I want the motherfuckers to pay now, pay for, for what they did to me now. Not later on now. So, you know, 
Uh, with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic. Because, I mean, I'm going to tell you something. Pussy is just like a drug. Yeah. Whether, whether you want to realize it or not, it's addictive. It's addictive. And, and, and there's a lot of brothers so caught up in it. It's where they do anything, uh, you know, uh, even to the point of putting their own life and freedom in jeopardy. Right. Boy. You know what I'm saying? And then when you end up in prison over some woman, over a no good woman at that especially, that that the, you 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 know what I'm saying, you call yourself trying to protect or defend, especially over some BS. Now she gone with the next nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> or you know, riding on the L. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. So, so, so I mean, it's like, <laughs> what, 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 I mean, what part of this do you not understand? When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. Thank <laughs> you. 